Hello and welcome to day 38 of 100 Days of Tonalism. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the study I've done today is by George Ness, and it is called Summer Night. Um, we've covered George Ness in pretty good detail, and uh, we're we're not even halfway through, so there'll be a lot more George Ness paintings. This one is really came out pretty with the. Uh, the moon and the uh, the way the greens offset the oranges and blues, as I mentioned in my text. Um, I'm going to read a little bit today from a book called Ines Landscapes by Alfred Werner. Uh, it was at Newark that George received his general education, a rather elementary and even fragmentary one. It is most surprising that an artist like Ines should emerge from a milieu in which nobody was much interested in anything but business. There is no explanation for it except the one offered by the artist's son, George Ness Jr., who followed in his father's footsteps by becoming a painter, but is not now remembered chiefly as the, el as the elder Ness's biographer. He tells us that even when he was young, his father was different from other boys, sensitive and of delicate health. As a matter of fact, uh, George Ness suffered from epilepsy. And I've noticed, no doubt, had a, a bearing on his choice to become uh, an artist. He was a dreamer, an idealist from earliest childhood, and lived much in a world of his own imaginations. His desires first began to crystallize when, as a very little chap, he saw a man painting a picture out in a field. Immediately, a responsive chord was struck, and his own nebulous groping for self expression became at once a concrete idea. Then and there he made up his mind that he would, when he grew up, he would be a painter. He thought it was the most wonderful thing in the world to make with paint the things that he saw around him, clouds, trees, sunsets, and storms. And he's absolutely right. It is really one of the most wonderful things in the world. It's, it's so taken for granted. Uh, people that don't paint, and people that don't paint beautiful landscapes. I mean, you might be a painter who is involved with doing some kind of clever modern art and uh, it seems to me that uh, you're in a bit of a vacuum there um, seeing as any uh, moves you make towards beauty or representation in your art are going to be stymied by the um, the press and the uh, general fine art market um, well that, that I will say that is changing Re -re representational arts making a big comeback and uh, it's long overdue Trying to turn George and Ness into a businessman, his father brought him a grocery store, or bought him a grocery store, in which he installed the teenager as a manager. But George insisted that he wanted to become an artist. Reluctantly, reluctantly, John William and Ness allowed him to take some lessons in painting from an itinerant artist named John Jesse B Barker, about whom very little is known, and later placed him in an apprentice with a firm of engravers in New York City. The same trade was learned by two older artists, Ash, Asher Brown Durand and John Frederick Kensett, who became prominent members of the Hudson River School. Later, Ines was to make very little use of the skills he had acquired in the two years he was with the firm, nor did the paintings of uh, Regis Francois Guignard, a French artist who had once come to New York and with whom and as it studied for a year, make a strong impact in his own development. Uh, what he was most inspired by was etchings of the old masters, and he uh, he tried. He would even take these etchings out with him into nature and en endeavor to sort of synthesize the two. Um, really, a, a remarkable accomplishment. Uh, what he did with his life and with American art, it, it can't be underestimated. And that's one of the reasons I've done over 33 studies of Ines in this uh, series. And so um, I recommend staying tuned if you want to learn more about him and, uh, you know, at least get some insight into my approach to his approach. Um, that's it for day 38. You can join me tomorrow for day 39. Um, and uh, if you would like to see more of my work, go to landscapepainter.co.nz. Meanwhile, stay out of trouble.